This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through your 2018 Sunset Trail model 262BH. Okay, we're on the door side of the trailer here. I'm moving towards the rear. Okay, so in the very back we have a, a rack for your grill. Now, your grill has to be plugged in. So, under here, let me see if I can get down there. There's a quick connect right here so you can see that uh, you have to you connect the male end to it obviously and then there's a little a gas valve it looks like a lever that you swing parallel with the fitting to turn it on all right also in your outside kitchen you have a cooktop and it has a quick connect also all right so you're obviously going to pull this out but the quick, quick connect is already connected to the the range top and let's see what we got down here and there's another one to connect the LP now this obviously draws LP from your two front tanks so all right you have scissor type stabilizers one on each corner takes a crank or a three quarter inch socket on a drill it's the most common way people use it you get your you got a refrigerator works 110 AC as soon as you plug in your trailer, it's turned on. Got a long or wide, I guess you would call it, power awning with an LED strip. You got outside speakers. This is a service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there, except for service. Obviously a vent for your furnace. This is um, power and antenna out to, hang, uh, to put a TV set out here. All right. So here we are, this is your front pass-through compartment. You can see this is your grill right here. And that's the hose I told you about to connect it. You've got this rack here, which you can see at the bottom under this stuff is what the grill sits on. Uh, and you have a, a reducer to reduce your, your plugs down to, all the way down to 15 amp if you need to. The crank is right there for the stabilizers. This sprayer, there's gonna be a spray port it plugs into. You can just hose things down with it. All right, so moving towards the front. You have a deep cycle marine battery, two 20 pound LP tanks, a power tongue jack. Now if this power tongue jack was ever to fail, you could pull this cap off right here, this rubber plug, hopefully you can see that in the sunlight here. And the same crank, crank, excuse me, the same crank that works for your stabilizers will actually go on there. You can use a three-quarter inch socket too if you need to on a drill. That would make it real fast. But you can crank it manually is what it comes down to. So if you ever fails on you, you can always get hitched and unhitched. All this is here is a, is a port to hook up a solar panel. If you were to purchase a solar panel to charge your battery, that's where it would hook up. It doesn't run the trailer or anything like that. It just will charge the battery. Okay. All right, so this is uh, obviously the most common way to get, to get water into your trailer is through the city water hookup. You'll almost always use that. But if you go to a campsite that does not have plumbing on the campsite, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank and you will fill it right here. You can fill it up and then you've got a, an electric pump inside that'll pump your water just like you have city water. So everything that has city water uh, or, or everything that would work with city water, I'm sorry, will work with uh, this system. So it's just uh, a way to always um, be able to use all your plumbing in there. I guess I went a long way to say something simple, but hopefully you understand. This type of slide out, just so you know, is called the Accu Slide. You can tell by the cables and pulleys. All right. So now this is the city water hookup, the one that I told you you're going to use almost always. Uh, you're just going to hook your water up to there, turn it on, and you're all set, ready to go. Uh, your dump valves are down here. Okay, so let's see what we got here. I just want to look around a bit. Okay, so I'll close them. So this is your black tank valve right here, right here. Okay, and this is your gray tank valve. This one has the same color handle, so you can't tell as easily. Sometimes they have a gray and a black handle, but you can see it's, it shows you up here that the gray is on the left and the black is on the right. 
So the black tank obviously is, is toilet water and waste. The gray tank is sink and shower water. So what you'll do is you'll put your hose on here. You can put the other end of the dump station, obviously. Then you'll dump the black first. Um, after the black is dumped, you'll dump the gray. The reason you do that, obviously, because the gray water is cleaner water than the black water, so it washes things out a bit. Then you can leave the black valve open, and you come up here to your Santa flush, your black tank flush. So you hook the hose at the dump station right onto here, and like it says on the sticker, always make sure that your black valve is open. Then you would turn on the water and it'll spray the inside of your tank. Uh, it'll clean off the sensors in the black tank and it'll just clean it out in general, which is a good thing, obviously. So that's the last thing you would do. All right. Okay, I'm on my feet again. One more time. All right, so this is your water heater. First of all, this is the spray port. I showed you the blue coiled uh, sprayer that fits right out of there. Um, this is empty at this point. Um, you drain it with this plug right here. It comes right out of there, all right? Um, the reason you would drain it is because, you know, if you leave it in there and it, it's in there for months in the hot sun and all that, it'll get start to get brackish and turn into bilge water and smell like rotten eggs and all that like water does. So it's good to drain it when you're not camping with it. Um, so this runs on both gas and electric, I believe. I will know for sure when I get inside, but yeah, I believe it does. Um, the switches are inside. Uh, just make sure, always make sure that the water tank is filled before you turn on the water. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm having a hard time this morning, I'm sorry. Before you turn on the gas or electric, because you don't want to run it without water in it or it'll, it'll damage it, all right? Um, also, you have to remember to bypass your water heater before you pump antifreeze into it. If you don't know, you may know all this stuff already, but if you don't know that, um, before it's winterized, you have to bypass the water heater. There are valves on the back. It's something you have to research a bit or have it done if you don't know, all right? This housing right up there, it just shows us that this is pre-wired for a backup camera takes a Furion camera that fits in that housing so if you get one uh, get one that fits right in that housing you got to get the right one okay also while we're looking up you have to inspect your roof three times a season at least so you'll go up on the roof you can walk around up there no problem uh, you you check all the ceiling on the roof you make sure there's no cracking or separation starting and some years sometime you're gonna see some crack some separation starting so you want to get that taken care of immediately when you do it's very, very important to inspect your roof. Okay. All right, so this is your monitor panel here. Uh, your battery, you can see, is totally charged. You always check it when you're not plugged in, though. Fresh water is empty. You can see as it fills, it'll graduate up in one-third increments. Uh, the black tank is empty. Gray tank. And gray tank number two. This one probably has a galley tank also. So there'll be a separate valve outside for this, just for this gray tank. The galley tank is actually just a second grade tank. They call it the galley tank because it um, just just takes the water from the kitchen sink. All the rest of the plumbing's on the rear of the trailer, so it just it's just an issue with plumbing. So they do it. That's how they do it. All right. Um, okay. So yes, to turn your water heater on electric, you're just going to go like that. Always make sure there's water in the tank. Gas is like that. Always make sure there's water in the tank. To use the onboard pump that we spoke about because of, uh, you know, you're camping at a campsite without plumbing, so you take your water with you, you just turn this on here, okay? Now, you also use that for winterizing the trailer, the pump, so that's something you'd have to look into if you don't know it. You may know, like I said, you may know all this stuff, I don't, I'm just assuming you don't, just so I don't miss anything. Your uh, uh, LED light, let me make sure that your arms are ready to go out here. Let me come out here side here for a second. Okay, so with this one, keep in mind the door has to be on a 90 degree angle to the trailer, so it doesn't the awning arm doesn't hit the door when it goes out. So you have to remember that. Then we're just going to come up here and we're going to go on and extend, and out it goes. You see it headed out. It'll go out approximately eight feet, and. Um, you know you're all the way out when you see the awning tube. Uh, you'll see fabric obviously unrolling and then when you see the tube itself you know you're all the way out. 
that's coming up right now. So there you have it. So that's all the way out. All right. Never leave the awning out unattended. So if you're not going to be at the campsite, you roll it in. The wind can come up real quick and damage it in just an instant. So you, you never leave it out unless you're at the campsite. All right, the slide out is already out, but I'll just show you how it works. I'll come in a little ways. Come in like so and back out like so. Very simple. And I think that's it for the monitor panel, yes. Okay, so then we move down here to the range. Okay, uh, you have a, a range hood with a fan and a light. The microwave works like any other microwave. The range, obviously you open the top. I'm not sure if the, if the gas is on at this point, so we'll see here. If not, I'll just talk you through it. So it lit so we have gas turned on so let me back up a bit so you can see it you're just gonna you're just going to turn it on to light then you're gonna turn this sparker clockwise like that and they light and so you have three burners and three knobs um, now for the oven it's a little different you're gonna need a grill lighter with a long neck so what you'll do is you'll, down here, just so you know, there's a pilot light way back in the back there. So you can sort of see it right there on the camera. Um, so you're just going to go to pilot. You depress it and hold it. Oops, let me show you again. You depress it and hold it on pilot. Then you go down here with your lighter and you light it. Once it, the flame lights, you're still going to be holding this in. So you hold it in for another 10 or 15 seconds after it lights. Then you just go to operating temperature, whichever temperature you want. It'll cycle on and off like a regular oven, of course, but when you shut off uh, the, the valve, the oven flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use it. All right. And you always have this closed when you're traveling or it will break. All right, this device down here is the power converter. What this does is converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. So you just open it up like so. So you see this is the 110 AC side. It's got regular household type circuit breakers here and they're labeled. You probably recognize that from home. Um, then it converts the other rest of the power down to 12 volt DC over on this side. It has 12 volt fuses here and they're labeled. All right, so um, if any of these fuses were to blow, uh, they'll actually light up and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. So you would actually know that. Um, so, uh, one other thing this does is the battery charger, it's tender, um, so it'll just basically sense your battery and see how much energy it needs and always keep it charged up. As long as you're plugged into shore power, it'll keep it charged up. Alright, that's the power converter. Okay, so this is a Norco refrigerator. Why that's still in there, I don't know. But basically it's very simple. You're going to turn it on, then you have mode. That right there, they're showing you that drop is gas. So that you would, it would be running on gas right now. It'll light, and you could pull it down the road on gas, for example. This one means, the A means it's auto. The reason they call it auto, I'm not plugged in right now, so it switched to gas automatically. So there, that, there, that shows you what we're talking about. It always seeks out electricity first, and if it can't find it, it'll switch to gas. Um, we're not plugged in at this point, so it couldn't find the uh, the AC power, so it switched right to gas. If you're If you're running it on electricity in the middle of the night and you have a power outage it'll switch automatically you can also run it dedicated right there to, to electricity um, gas the most common way to have it is on auto and this is temperature it should be up all the way so okay the, the main difference you got to hold the button for a second to shut it off the main difference between this gas absorption refrigerator and a regular refrigerator is it takes longer to reach operating temperature so figure 8 12 hours in advance to get it up to or down to temperature um, so you want to really start it the day before if you can but uh, either way you have to you have to start it early because it takes a lot once it reaches operating temperature it's fine but it takes a long time to get there all right this is just a mounting bracket for a TV obviously this is your radio slash disc player it plays DVDs and CDs here obviously 
Um, you can stream off this USB stick right here, put all your favorite albums on one little USB drive and take them with you. Uh, you can hook up wirelessly and stream music or video from your phone. Uh, and it has two speaker zones, one is inside, two is outside. So it does a lot of things for just considering your camping. So um, it's a very capable radio. All right, and of course you have your bunks here. Um, your water, let me think where your water heater was. I think it was in the back, wasn't it? Yeah, so your water heater, just so you know, to get to the valves on the back, is gonna, you're going to have to remove this panel here to get to it. And uh, when, you, uh, when you pull the panel up, you'll see the valves to winterize it on the back. Okay? All right, the bathroom. First of all, you have a fan. You always want to run the fan when you're using the shower because it will pull all the humidity out for you. The thing to remember is that with the toilet is you can't use it dry and you can't use it without chemical. So when you get to the campsite, you're pulling, obviously, stabilize your trailer, hook up the power of the water. Then you come in here and you'll take your chemical, whichever chemical you use, you'll put one dose right in the toilet and you'll step on the pedal. Because there will be water hooked up, that's the black tank directly below, just so you know. Because there'll be water hooked up, it'll come swirling out. So you're going to put about a gallon or two of water in there. There's no way to tell exactly what that is. You just use common sense. And yeah, that's about a gallon or so, you know. The bottom line is you have to have a little bit of water in it and chemical to start using it. So anytime you start with an empty black tank, you've got to put chemical and water in it. If you were going to stay at the campsite for another week, let's say, and you had to dump the black tank, um, after you dump it, you'd come in here and repeat that procedure. Chemical and about a gallon or two of water. All right. Okay, it's so all very simple stuff. All right, so what have we got here? Okay, so this is a, let me take the cushions off here. Let me turn on some light. It's gonna be a switch for this one. Some of, the, some of the lights will have a button in the middle. Some of them have a switch. There we go. Okay. So. You'll remove the cushions, then you're going to grab it down here, just like this, and pull it out. I know it's hard to see because I have to be very close with the phone, but you can see the legs are going out now, like so. You drop it down, it's all foam, so it's not it's really not so bad for a hide of bed Drop the back into place, and there you have it. Very simple. The table, you could also convert into a bed. Obviously, you take it off the hooks off the wall there and you drop it down and put it on these cleats here. There's one on each side. Drop the table top on there. Use the back cushions to fill in the space and you've got another bed. So you got the two bunks, you got that bed, and then this one. Okay. There's also another device in here which I haven't seen. I gotta find it here. It's the. Oh, here it is over here. Okay. So this is the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector here. It should always be green. What it does, it detects carbon monoxide buildup or LP gas. You can put it on the test. It'll go through self-test here. Another one coming up. Okay. Back to green. So it always should be green like that. Um, if, you, if it goes off, you're obviously going to take everybody outside, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on, all right? But if it's not green, get it serviced, because it's a very important thing to have. Also, this is your thermostat. It's very simple. Remember, there's a lag time for every appliance you turn on. So if you turn on the air conditioner, there could be a five-second lag time before it turns on and shuts off. You just have to give it a, a little bit of time. So you're going to light it up by pushing mode. Right now we're on cool, high, cool, low. Always use auto. Cool auto is what you want. Um, heat, right, and off. The other one is fan. Fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. So basically for air conditioning, you're going to go to either low auto or high auto, and then a heat right there, and that's off. All right? Very simple stuff. We're still cleaning your trailer, obviously, so it's a little bit messy but it will be cleaned by the time you get here this is the escape window here I don't know if you can see it with the back lighting but you just push it through like that um, you would push it all the way through obviously if you want to escape 
then you would grab this red tab and pull the screen out and out you go okay one thing to know about these blinds um, they'll normally stay in place but after you've been traveling a while sometimes they have to be adjusted so let's say you're out west somewhere or down in Big Bend and down at the bottom of Texas or wherever you're at um, and they just start to slide down on you all you have to do is tighten this string up the tighter this string is the tighter this is so you would pull this through either by using unscrewing this little spool here or just working it through you tie a knot maybe a half inch down just to tighten it up a little bit you want, don't want to go overboard and break it but when you do that it'll tighten these up so you can always adjust them yourself if you need to so you don't have to put up with it until you get service all right okay and one other thing this is the there's a backer plate here for a TV there's a video or in a sense is probably antenna out um, and there's power if you, you'll need a swing out bracket here spend the extra money if you can and get a bracket that locks into place this works for both TV brackets because if not you have to hang a strap from it and it's kind of unsightly and it's always hanging there it's not a it's not a clean install you spend a little extra money you'll get one that locks into place when you're traveling so that's the best way to go with it okay I think I might have covered everything here let me look around I, uh, I'll walk through it here and we can see if I forgot anything I covered all that stuff there um, just so you know your TV hooks up to here right and that cell that just turned on that's a signal booster for the digital antenna when you're hooked up to the antenna with your TV which you hook onto here you're always going to want this on it should always be green because if not you won't get a good picture it'll just be all it'll, it'll you'll have a lot of digital noise and it'll just outright lock up without if, if it's not on so you always want to do that um, I think we've got it though okay yes so you have to remember um, like I said you want to bypass your water heater before you draw any freeze in and if you're going to do it yourself you can research it I believe on this one I'm 90 percent sure that the water pump is under here you can see the screws here there's going to be four screws and you would take this top panel off and you'll be able to see the the water pump itself and how you draw antifreeze into it there should be a winterizing kit on it I can't tell you that 100 percent but I can tell you 90 percent they don't always put one but usually they do okay and then of course underneath that bottom bunk you, you would pull the mattress out and flip up the panel and you'll see the back of the water heater or you can see the bypass valves all right so okay so thanks for buying this trailer from national rv detroit we'll we try to have really good customer service we're getting better and better at it and uh so if you have issues you call us and we'll work through you with it or work through it with you actually and um remember to inspect your roof at minimum of three times a season uh, you have to do that if you can't get up there send somebody up there take it in but it's got to be done that's how you protect your investment the the leading cause of damage is not inspecting your seals and that's a fact so every trailer has to be inspected so okay well thank you very much and um, make sure you use this trailer a lot and uh, get your get the most enjoyment out of it you possibly can thank you